Hello, 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 my lovely, lovely friends. Thank you for joining me here on A Journey in Light. My name is Joy. Hello. Today's pick a card, love tarot reading. We are going over how is your person currently feeling about you? What are their thoughts? What are they thinking? Um, anything else that comes up from my guides, you guys know that I'll share. But our main focus is their feelings and their thoughts about you and the situation. So I have three lovely piles for you guys today. Pile one, we have this owl card, and I paired that with this crystal owl, or clear quartz, sorry, clear quartz owl <laughs> for pile one. Pile two, we have this otter card. I don't have a crystal otter, but since otters typically will uh, crack open the shells uh, to get out what's inside, sometimes you'll find um, otters with this uh, similar shell on top of their chest. Um, so I have these two paired together. So otter with this shell. In pile three, we have the elephant and I've paired that with this elephant uh, tiger's eye. So tiger's eye that's been carved into the shape of an elephant for pile three. So guys, take a deep breath and go with whichever pile you're drawn to the most. If you're drawn to more than one, totally fine. You can watch more than one pile. Um, you can uh, watch different piles for different people. That's totally fine. You can watch the whole thing, completely up to you. You guys get to do whatever you want. Um, if at any point you feel like I'm speaking a little too slow, there's a little gear um, on uh, the screen, like in the settings, and you can adjust the playback speed. So you can speed me up <laughs> if need be, if it's taking me a while to get to the point for you. Um, that, that's a fun hack for YouTube if you don't know it. Um, you'll still be able to understand me completely fine, uh, usually. So um, feel free to do that. Um, there was something else I wanted to say. I just want to say thank you guys so much for being here. I would love to have you be part of the channel. So if you're not subscribed, um, I do a lot of love readings and different little subjects around love on this channel. Um, I would love to have you be a part of the channel. If you are returning um, faithful viewer, please don't forget to like this video or comment, even if it's just an emoji that really does help my algorithm here on YouTube. They do look at those different facets. So every like, every um, engagement from you guys really, really, really does help me. So I really appreciate when you guys take the time to at least like throw an emoji in the comment and, and like the screen. Um, if you are subscribed and you like these type of readings, don't forget to hit the bell. Um, I also am available for personal readings. If you're interested in that, you can find my snip feed link in the description box below. Um, I have live one-on-one -on -one readings as well as recorded readings based off questions. Uh, if you're, um, if your schedule doesn't align with mine, I can do recorded readings. Um, you will get just as much information uh, that way as well. So, and can be a little more cost effective depending on what you're looking to do. So again, that is in the description box below. The timestamps will also be in the description box, the pinned comment and the chapters under this video. So feel free to click on your pile and it'll take you right to your spot in the reading. As always, thank you guys again. I'll leave these up for a moment. If you need more time, feel free to pause the screen and then I will see you at your pile. Bye guys. Hello, hello, my lovely friends for pile one. You pick this owl card along with our clear quartz uh, carved owl. And we are going over um, what is your person feeling? What are they thinking about you and the connection and anything else my guides want me to throw in there? You guys know that I'll share. If you're returning, please don't forget to like this video. It really does help me out. Or even if you just throw something in the comment, maybe tell me where you're watching from. That's one of my favorite things to know is from where you guys are watching in the world. I think that's super, super cool. And um, the algorithm or the, the analytics in the back of YouTube never are that detailed. So I, it, it's it's, it's again it's very exciting to see all around the world where people watch from so I would appreciate if you guys would do that so all right we're gonna jump into this I'm gonna start with a little bit of an energy check-in I did have a friend recently tell me that she doesn't love the energy check-ins it is a newer thing I've been doing so if if you trust your intuition you don't need the energy check-in you can kind of just 
fast forward the part of the video until you see me start putting out the tarot if you want to jump in there totally fine that's completely up to you um, other people love it so i'm going to leave it in but feel free to, to skip it if need be so with this owl card this owl uh, description in the book. Um, it's associated with air signs. So air signs would be Gemini, Libra, uh, Aquarius. So there could be a connection there for some of you. Um, this is about abundance and clairvoyance and treasures. This description talks about this white owl being um, being an indicator of treasures or good fortune coming your way. Uh, it's pretty interesting. But when I'm looking at this reading, I'm going to associate this with there, there's something like precious about this connection, precious about this person, like almost like they're a treasure. It's, it's reminding of, um, oh my gosh, is it a Bruno Mars song treasure? I don't know if who sings that. I think it's Bruno Mars. Anyways, that might be relevant for somebody. Um, but there also is a big spiritual clairvoyant connection. So there could be a telepathic connection. Also, I'm hearing like someone showing up in dreams or maybe even seeing owls around. Um, it could be a big indicator for you as well. So I'm going to put that here. I'm going to pull a couple more cards just for a little bit of an energy check-in. Take it or leave it. The whole little scenario might not fit. I'm just, my, my goal is to have those that need confirmation in the beginning to have something um, be resonant for them in the energy check-in. So, so far we have mask regrets and check-in. Okay, both of those. And one more. Energy check-in. Okay, just getting another one. <laughs> My guides are like, more. I mean, a lot of people pick this pile. So again, at least part of this or something in here should be resonant for you. So we have masks. We have not showing true feelings. So this could be someone con concealing, hiding. Someone may have an owl mask. Like, I don't know if that's like, a, it feels... I don't know, I'm seeing like a wooden owl mask on the wall, but it feels tribal for some reason. I don't know who that pertains to. I don't know what that's about. Um, anyways, with the rest of us, <laughs> the rest of you guys, but this could be someone hiding. There's also a sign of pretending, deluding, or even gaslighting. So that could be, um, I feel like some of us gaslight ourselves about situations at times, but so that's all here. So there could be like a concealing or hiding information between this connection or feel like someone's not opening up completely. Um, we have regret. Someone feels remorse for the way they treated you. So regret is, regret is showing up here. Right, we have cloud nine. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight balloons. Is it? Yeah, okay. Well, our seven balloons in a heart. I don't know how that adds up to nine, but for some reason I felt guided to count. So seven may be important. So the seventh house, which would be Libra. But cloud nine, so there is a feeling of up in the air, being excited about this connection or when you're with this person. Um, there also could be a birthday connection for some of you with those balloons. All right, we have Metatron Rainbow Bridge always open. So there could be a rainbow connection. Maybe some of you guys um, are part of the LBGTQ+. Oh my gosh, I think I said that backwards. The beautiful alphabet <laughs> that that we relate to um, the uh, the rainbow for some of you. Oh, we have um, this beautiful scallop shell. It says pink, self love and nurture, but always open. So there could be like a there's always like a opening beneath uh, between this connection. I also think about the treasure at the end of a rainbow, which this owl. There's something about treasure, good fortune, or even money could be associated in this connection. And then we have self love and nurture, the number 26 and 27 of this deck. All right, let me get all these out to get a bigger picture. We have a King of Wands, so now we have Fire Shine showing up. There's confidence, passion, intensity. Um, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, I was thinking about the ninth house when I was looking at that cloud nine, but I didn't say it, which is, is um, Sagittarius energy. So here it shows up. And then we have soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. So this person could, could be someone that's in your soul family, soulmate, one of the soul level connections that you feel. With. That's not really surprising when this owl is here, there's a connection. So with this whole thing, there could be, again, people, and it feels like both sides, like some, like maybe you were hiding your feelings, they were hiding their feelings, maybe there's regret 
about not being open about those feelings, but there's a feeling like this was always open. There will always be this connection. There's always this intensity. There's always this love and the self-love, but it is coming from this kind of beautiful, unconditional kind of place. And so I feel like some of you guys maybe have moved on from this connection or kind of, or, but watching more to be curious. At least somebody out there is. All right, with that said, hopefully you found some confirmations you're looking for. Um, but if you know this is your pile, you know this is your pile. So let's jump into this. All right, we're using the crystal rain, or no, crystal unicorn tarot, right? I don't know where my box is. I've been wanting this deck forever and I found it on Makari. Crystal unicorn tarot, yes. But this is this, I don't know if it comes in regular size, but this is the mini deck. Anyways, moving along. Pile one, how is their person currently feeling about them? We have the star, Aquarius energy, again, air sign showing up. This is, this is healing, this is optimism, this is wishing on a star. So there could be a wishful vibe going on. Um, I feel like some of you guys are at a distance from this person. Again, it's like someone wanting to peek in and see what's going on. So that could be a, a mirrored energy. You're curious about them. They're curious about you. We have the six of cups, that soulmate energy, that, that soul level connection. So knowing someone from this life or a life before, possibly knowing someone from your childhood, there also could be a family connection. But when I'm looking at how this person's feeling about you, it feels like there's some optimism. There's a feeling of home. There's a feeling of connection of, of meant to be per se. Okay, we have a 10 of wands. So there is responsibility and heaviness here. We'll clarify that and get a better idea. We have the nine of pentacles. The nine of pentacles is a bit of an independent energy. It's self-reliant, but it's also very abundant. If we're looking at how this person feels about you, some of you, this person could perceive you as, you know, doing your own thing, okay on your own, um, vibing on your own. We have this little bird sitting here, which I know is, is, in a lot of decks with nine of pentacles. I need to look up what that exact correlation is, but there feels like there's like a, you have a friend in me kind of vibe here going on. Like, um, like you're always sitting there. I can always look to you for advice. I don't know where I'm getting that. Like I think of, you know, certain animals that they'll have, I don't know. I think with rhinoceroses, like sometimes they'll have like a tick bird in the in with them as like a friend if they're lonely so I don't know it feels like it's like always like you were always connected you always have a friend in me kind of vibe this person also could you know look to you for advice or trust your opinion then we have a knight of swords so our knight of swords is an action card he goes he's pretty much one of the quickest of the knights um he might be the quickest I can't recall but um this is this is wanting to come in wanting to communicate wanting to express something we're going to clarify that so we'll get a bigger message but all right why is the star card here when it comes to their feelings and get more insight to this wishful hopeful energy we have a three of wands. So the three of wands is kind of planning for your future, but also a card of like waiting, waiting to see what happens, waiting for the um, the ship to come in. We have two little ships in the background and this person's kind of looking out, waiting for this, or this unicorn per se, uh, is kind of waiting for this ship to come in. Um, so there could be a sense of like hope waiting, like, like I always feel like this is going to happen. Something's going to happen. You know, it might still feel off in the distance. Again, some of you guys could just be at a physical distance, uh, like a long distance connection as well. Um, there's just, it just feel distant. Um, but uh, there, there's like, there's a sense of like, I'm doing my own thing. I'm living my own life, but I'm really hopeful that in the future that something will manifest itself. Um, all right, Six of Cups. We have the Hermit, so Virgo energy. There's something healing about this connection, introspective, something like knowing from the inside. We kind of started off with that with this owl card. Um, this person also could see you a bit as a light in the dark. I think about the Hermit carrying, you know, the lantern and, and being like this mentor, but like silently. Um, the Hermit also can be about someone being recluse and, and turning in. So if we're looking at how they feel about you, it feels like this person, they feel connected, but yet they can't quite figure you out completely. But yet there's a knowing here. All right. 
Um, they're, they're pushing me to call out September. I know Virgo runs August through September, but they're saying September, September, September. So September may be pertinent for somebody. If, if you're dealing with a Virgo, they may be a September Virgo, but they're just, it feels like more than just Virgo, it's something about September. Maybe something's coming up in September, anniversary, a birthday, a particular event. I don't know, that's for somebody. So let's see. I feel like I'm on fire today with this one. I did a big meditation before this reading and so I feel like I'm buzzing. All right. Um, oh, we have the lover's card. So this, there is a sense of responsibility to this, a sense of ownership about this connection. The lovers represents Gemini. Again, air signs showing up again. Um, there is this sense of heaviness to the choice of this connection. And I keep getting the scenario of people at a distance and like kind of doing their own thing. They, they, they see you as being independent. They see you as doing your own thing, but yet there's, there's like, I want to reach out. I, I, I feel this connection and, and it's like a part of me and it's heavy on me. Um, and, and there's a good and a bad side to that. So I feel like some of you may, may be resonant as, as I'm talking about this, like you, it's like you do your own thing, but yet there's, there's always this feeling of connection and it's like, well, what does that mean? What do I do with this? What do, what do I make of this? You know, um, what choice do I make around this? But there, again, with that feeling of unconditional love that kind of came through, there's a feeling like I just want what's best for you. And I feel like that's very mutual. Um, all right, this nine of pentacles. All right, we have an ace of pentacles and a king of swords. This person wants you know, they want to be able to come in and offer you something. They also feel like with this abundant energy and the Ace of Pentacles is very much like almost like the universe giving you something. Um, I feel like this person, they, they want clarity around this connection with the King of Swords. There's there's like, I want to open up. I want to be honest. I want to I want to share something with you. I want to almost like give back what you gave to me where we have this, this, um, rainbow again like you could be like very much a good fortune to this person like you're you're like the pot of gold at the end of a rainbow kind of vein or kind of vibe here and this clarity we have the the goodness I'm going so fast I'm, I, I my mouth cannot keep up with all the stuff that's coming through sorry uh, blah, blah, blah. okay <laughs> we have the sword of truth here Oh, it's all just flowing and my tongue's getting tied. Okay. So there also could be a tongue tied for some of you guys. It's like, I have so much I want to say and I just can't get it all out. So there's like a, there's a, there's an excitement here in this energy. There's, there's a, I can't wait. I've been waiting for so long to tell you all this. I've been waiting so long to share my truth. I've been waiting so long to be able to offer you something that maybe I couldn't before in the past, but this person does feel like you were, you know, a blessing in their life, or you are a blessing in their life, depending on your situation. Um, again, you're, you're a bit of a treasure to this person. And, and also you've helped this person see the truth about their situation. If they were in some situation that could be a job relationship, hanging around with people that, that didn't, didn't really add value to their life. There's something about your presence that helped them see that. And then we have the seven of pentacles. So this person, I feel like what they want to communicate is that they do want to invest in them, this connection. They do want to see if this can grow, where it can grow to, you know, um, the seven of pentacles is another waiting energy, but it's like investing. It's like planting the seeds and waiting for to harvest what you you've, you've planted. Um, bottom of the deck, we have the wheel of fortune. So the wheel of fortune being here, there is a sense of destiny. Also, there could be a lot of karmic lessons tied into this connection. I feel like a lot of you all, like it's it's like triggered by this person, but meant to learn on your own. Maybe that's why there's a distance or I'm feeling a distance. Maybe that's needed. It's like, I trigger you, you trigger me and we're supposed to grow, but it feels like a lot of this was meant to grow separately. That's kind of how they're showing me. So take that if it fits, if it doesn't let it go. Again, this is a general reading, so take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Um, we have the moon here, and we have an ace of wands and the emperor. Goodness. And strength. So Leo, Aries, we have an ace of wands. The moon is Pisces, or I also give a nod to Cancer because Cancer is ruled by the moon. Um, but there's a feeling, yeah, a destiny, like I'm meant to meet you, like soulmate energy, 
I felt guided to remind some people that, you know, um, just to, if, what am I trying to say? I, I hate, I never want to put my beliefs on other people. So take this or leave this. But the way it's explained to me is that we have multiple soulmates, a lot of different people, and we're meant to be in each other's life. Like there's a destiny to the encounter. And then what we do from there is free will. I know I've touched on that here and there. And I've had a couple people ask me to make a, a video just about like soul connections and stuff. I just, I don't know how I feel about it just yet. Um, but um, maybe I will one day. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll do like a YouTube live one day and then I can just answer questions as they come up. Cause sometimes I feel like I don't know what I know until someone asks me. Um, and then it just flows through. So uh, anywho, back to this reading, goodness. Spirit just has a lot to say as we lose one of our candles. We relight that. Thanks for bearing with me. But yeah, this energy just feels like a little forlorn, a little inquisitive, a lot of unconditional love and sweetness in this connection. But I feel like this person just feels like no matter what you do, they want you to be happy. And I feel like this mask, like some of them either it was intentional or they're in a position where they couldn't speak their truth. They couldn't tell you. They couldn't, they had to pretend like something wasn't there because of some situation. So I don't know how that fits for all of you, but take it if it fits somehow. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of respect here. And this regret feels, I mean, some of you that may, re if they treated you poorly for some reason, it could roll into that. But this is like, the way the energy is reading, it's like, I, I regret not speaking up. I regret not speaking my truth, I, but I, I don't know. I don't know where to go from here. And if I'm, if I'm explaining you, I think there's a lot of mirroring going on. And if ever, I know a lot of people ask, they're like, you're explaining me, what does that mean? Sometimes it could be mirroring or sometimes your guides led you to this reading because there's something you need to understand about yourself. So keep that in mind when you're watching tarot readings. There's something that you're supposed to supposed to click in for you to understand about yourself, your own patterns, things like that. Okay, um, I want to look into some hidden truths in this connection. So I'm going to use this deck. I'm going to shuffle it real quick. What are some hidden truths in this connection? Hidden truths. In truth, too many. In truth, pile one. Ready to take control and lead. This this reminds me of this person wanting to come in and plant some sort of seed to see what happens. We have these empty boots for some reason, but I have a shadow of a guy, like almost like a reflection here. It's like feels like I'm ready to to leave like something old behind and and go forward. So something that may be hidden, and this also could even be a challenge. So sorry, I meant to, this is usually my hidden, hidden truths or challenges. So for some of them, it may be hard or a challenge for them to take control and lead, but it says ready to. So I feel like a hidden truth that you might not know is this person, for some reason, wants to take off some old shoes. I, uh, maybe they're wearing an old story, if that makes sense to you, and, and step into to something more real and authentic for them and for you guys. powerless. The power struggle is real. So this person does feel a sense of powerlessness about this connection. Um, like there's something that str like struggles and we do have this person kind of climbing this rope. It's like trying to always like get to the next level of this, but they're, they're just like almost gravity pulls them down or they feel like there's forces against them at times. So there's something about like a struggle. There also could be a power struggle for some of them. And take that for how it fits, if it does. Okay, can we get one last hidden truth or challenge? Reconciliation is coming. So that is a hidden truth. If you're in separation from this person, some sort of like reconnection. Like again, that Knight of Swords, it does feel like someone wants to speak, when someone wants to talk. Like I've learned what I needed to learn. I, I wanna connect with you, I wanna speak with you. Um, so those are possible, you know, hidden truths or challenges. Um, I need to take a sip of my drink real quick. Okay. 
Okay. So next thing I want to look at is this person's intentions. So pile one, what's your person's intentions? Pile one, this person's intentions. It's a little deck day. <laughs> this is the Allison, or Wonderland Tarot. We have an eight of pentacles. This is this is energy of wanting to put, put the work in, wanting to do the things to make something happen. There also could be for some if they if you if they're a known workaholic, we'll see what else comes out with this, but someone could be like intend to kind of just focus on work or focus on their material situation. But let's see what else comes up with this to get a better picture of their intentions. We have the Queen of Swords. And then we have the Hermit again. Okay, intentions. Does feel a little two side story. So some of them, it feels like they wanna put in the steps to bring clarity, um, to kind of go and, and be introspective. Others of them, it feels like almost trying to put some work into themselves to gain clarity of themselves. Now, the Queen of Swords, she has a typical energy of cutting things out of her life or out of the life. So, and we do have this hermit, this guy on a horse going away from Alice and she's waving. So there could be a sense of, for some of them, their attention could be to go down the rabbit hole per se and really like figure out what they need to do in order possibly to take lead and to not feel powerless at this time. So that's kind of what came up for that. All right, um, where do I wanna go next? I feel I need just to pull, actually I'm gonna pull a couple more cards if we get some more insight to feelings since that's the main message of this. So can we get a little more insight to how this person is feeling towards our viewer, please? Vampire, being drained of your time and energy, fears from the past that will haunt you. So if this is a past connection, and again, if you're distant from this person, it feels like there's a sense of like, this is haunting them. There's something draining of this. Like, a, again, there feels like this siphon connection between the two of you. We have kiss, harmony, bliss, passion. There's also hesitancy and romance and intimacy. So again, there, there's like their regret is coming up over the a hesitancy. And really they, they, there's a lot of passion and bliss that they feel towards you. And I really feel like for some of you, it's like almost like haunting them. It's like, they know that you're you're doing well and they are they want you to be doing well but there there's a like I can't quite let this go. They still feel a lot of passion and bliss and harmony between you guys. We have cupcake. Liking yourself for who you are, making undesirable choices for approval. All right. So the cupcake, I feel like I don't know, maybe someone bought someone cupcakes. I feel like that's there for confirmation for somebody. Um I feel like this person battles with like if you will approve of them or not. So that there, there's a like I, I keep going back to maybe some of you guys never also told this person how you felt or you you couldn't or something is what's coming up. So it's like this person is hesitant at times because they're they're afraid that you won't approve of them. They have independence on the bottom, so freedom and self-reliance, which is kind of that nine of pentacles. I feel like some of them want to tell you that they're free from a situation. They want to express that to you. All right, I'm gonna pull one more deck and a couple more cards and feelings, and then we'll get into our song cards and channel messages. And then we'll do some confirmations for those that need confirmation at the end. Okay. Clock. Needing time cycles and takes time, time to heal, progressing. So we did have the hermit pop up twice again, which can be a bit introspective about healing. Um, 
I sometimes see the the hermit looking very much like Father Time, but I have a guide that is Father Time or similar to Father Time, but it's very hermity. So I don't know. I felt the need to. It's very earth sign like for some reason. I don't know. I feel the need to talk about that. But uh, they keep showing me my guide, even though I don't connect with them for this kind of stuff. But that's interesting. So maybe there's a father time connection for some of you for me to even discuss that. So, um, like there, like I even get the smell and everything that's associated with this, this, it's kind of like earthy, like damp smell. It's not bad. It's just earthy and damp. I don't know if that's resonant for somebody. All right. But anyways, to this card, there, there's a feeling of I do need to heal. I do need to take the time, but the cycles are moving and I feel like maybe time is slipping away. Maybe I've taken too long. And that's also could be some of this regret. Like, have I taken too long to make this happen, to come forward, to, to speak my truth? And let's pull one more. Can we get any more insight to how this person's feeling? I'm not getting overwhelmingly mushy feelings. And that's why it also gives me this feeling of separation like not necessarily that you're with this person i know we're looking at current f feelings but there's there's a separateness here so we have sunglasses watching looking perception stalking so this is someone looking at you they, they've kept an eye on you they're they're seeing what you're doing trying to see like it, there's a curiosity t to this and again this is why this is feeling distant for a lot of you or maybe I'm just really tuning in to one person. <laughs> so interesting. Um, Cause it's, it's so like clear, but it's, this person is trying to gain information, trying to look into what you're doing, what you're seeing, but, and, and some of them, they feel like they don't have the right to reconnect for some reason. Like there, there's a hesitancy about stepping out. Cause what if they were wrong? Okay, we do have the phoenix, a new phase, rekindle, renew, and growth, change mind, rise from the ashes on the bottom. So there could be a phoenix connection for some of you as well. Very transformative Scorpio kind of energy. All right, let's pull some song cards. So let's see. With the song cards, if you know the songs, cool. If you don't, um, there'll be a message for you in the lyrics if you feel so called to pick a song and look up the lyrics. There'll be a message for you there. So we have Apologize by One Republic, Patience by Guns N' Roses, Come On Closer by Jim, okay, as I flung, but I had one fly and land in my bookcase, so we're going to take whatever this, we have Purple Rain. Went flying out of the deck. There's too many of the other ones, so we'll pull one or two more. We have Amazed by Lone Star and Run to the Sun by NERD. So those are your song cards. Again, you can listen to them all. You can pick one. You can ignore it. Whatever you want to do. That is for you guys. And let's do some actual message cards. So let's start here. So pile one's person. What do they want to say? What would they say if they could? What do they want the viewer to know? I'm sorry if I ever contributed to the suffering of your heart. I'm struggling to find the right words to say to you. When I first met you, I honestly didn't know you were going to be this important to me. I don't care how complicated this gets. I still want you. Okay, we're going to take those. I'm truly sorry for my words and actions. Can you please forgive me? I turned out liking you a lot more than I originally planned. So it does feel like there's like a sneak up, like they weren't expecting this. Sometimes I look at you and wonder how I got so damn lucky. All right, I want to pull a couple cards from another deck. All right, let's see. What else does Pile 1 want to say if they could? 
karma is here to teach me a lesson. Again, there's some lessons going on. There's like a meant to be like to work through some, some lessons in this life with this person. Why do you keep breaking my heart? Well, okay. I want to make love to you. I'm in love with you. You are my other half. I miss you so much. And there's a lot that I want to say to you right now. All right. So those are your messages. Um, I'm going to move into confirmations for anyone who needs extra confirmation that this is indeed their person. We're going to move on to that. Um, if you're good where you're at, thank you guys for being here. Don't forget to like, comment, share this. always appreciate that. All right, let's see. Confirmation. So we have Scorpio. We have the sixth house, which is Virgo. Again, <laughs> Virgo is all over this. We have first house energy, which is Aries. We have eighth house energy, which is Scorpio. We have 12th house energy, which is Pisces. And ninth house energy, which is Sagittarius. So the correlating months to these numbers, we have January, June, December, September, and August. Um, all right. Um, other connections here. Someone could work in finances or loaning. Someone could be a bit of a thrill seeker. Someone could travel. Again, there could be long distance. I've talked about that a bajillion times. There could be a dream associated, a dream connection. Someone could ha be very prolific in their life um, with 8th house and 12th house. is very spiritual based kind of energy. There also, for some of you guys, could be in higher learning or this person, like professor level, um, master's kind of vibe or doctorate even um and somebody also could just be like um like it almost like feels like student of life where they've done a lot and learned a lot through just life experiences not necessarily a traditional school vibe all right um oh i forgot one of my bags hold on a second all right i've got my attribute bag i want to redo this whole thing i'm going to eventually redo all my attributes but we're still sticking with the ones we have so far. All right. We will work on that this weekend. We have smart. Again, there's there's a there's a smart, like either book smart, but also common sense, like street smart. Again, somebody is definitely like a student of life. And they're proud of that. It's something they may talk about. And we have shy and bold. And then we have from past. Definitely past life connection someone that you knew before, that kind of thing. All right, let's get some more. What else? Confirmation for those that need it. All right, we have Italy. So Italian, Italy connections. We have three of pentacles. Someone that you could have worked with or collaborated with at one point. We have Scorpio energy again. We have Europe. So we have Italy and Europe, which I guess Italy is in Europe, but all of a broader sense. All right, we have some letters here. We have R, K, X, E. So we have EX here, so someone could be an X. We have a Rex, Rex Manning Day. If you know, you know. All right, H, K, L, and N. I'm hearing Helen, also Keller, Helen Keller, I guess. Um, let me get some more letters, and I'll channel some names for you guys as well. So letter confirmations for pile one, please. Letter confirmation for pile one. We have B I P Y S Z and a couple more. I don't know. Uh, w O A and S. We have ass. <laughs> Maybe someone has a nice ass. Yes, we have bass, bass. Someone could be into fishing. I'm hearing Yasmina, Yasmin. Um, Bartholomew just popped up. Um, Olin or Owen. Orion. Isis. Lexi. Alexis. Um, Alex. Peter Paul. Z like Zumba or Zumina. Zoo something. Um, Abel. Alan. 
Henry. Someone might have really nice abs. Sabrina or Sabina. Should we have the whole Sabrina here? Another A, Sabrina. Um, Sabby. So Sebastian. I think I already said Yasmina, Yasmin, Jasmine. Ellen L. Um, Kevin. Kirk. Kendrick. Paula. Hearing a song like say what you want to say and let the words fall out. I want to see you. What song is that? Say what you want to say and let the words fall out. I want to see you. I don't remember the exact words. Anyways, um, Nelly, Nancy, Nelson, Neil, Reckon. Recon, Rika, Ava, Aya, Ariel, Araya, Aria, Lionel, Rick, Ricky, Richard. Reese, Riley. Yeah, the way I spell my daughter's name is here, Riley. I spell it different, poor kid. Um, uh, all right. Robert, Bob, Celine. Silas, Nikki, Nicole, Nicholas, Bebop, I don't know, Bill, William, Wallace, Six could be important, Henry's here. I already said that though. Henderson, Harry, Barry, they keep giving me an S name and I can't quite get it so obviously if their initials are here take that even if it's one letter um, or your initials. This could be you too for confirmations. Brenda, Lenny, Larry, Sassy Sissy, Sicily, maybe that's what it, I don't know, Sicilian, maybe that's, the, I don't know. Okay, but I will let you guys look at that. Take those for how they fit for you, please. All right, and I'm gonna pull a little bit of advice cards for you guys, just to end this out. Give us some advice for pile one. What's some advice for this connection? Advice for pile one. Commitment. We have two birds tying the knot. Oh, they're tying a knot with a blue string into a heart. So this is being committed to being truthful from your heart is the way this is reading for advice for me. So blue is the color of the throat chakra. We think about truth and speaking your truth and being open and honest. Again, especially if you held your feelings back. So if there's a chance to really speak truth from your heart. So if you do have an instance where this person reaches out, I, I feel like somebody has a tendency to put a wall up or is scared to be vulnerable and open. There is like... 
there is like this vibe about how you've grown, how you've learned, all the lessons you've been through is a lot of that is commitment to being honest and open about your heart here and allowing those words to, to speak out. Again, say what you want to say. Let the word, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to look that up. That's going to drive me crazy. I'm sure someone already knows what the song is. I feel like it's a Natasha Bedingfield song, but say what you want to is it Sarah Brown? Is that who it is? Sorry, we're just doing this right now. Oh, I don't want to add. Hold on. Let me pull it up. <laughs> All right, my boyfriend texted. His name is Josh, so there might be a, a, a Josh for somebody out there. They're saying, say Josh. So, all right. Um, is it Sarah? Morales? Say. Oh, yeah. I want to see you be brave. Brave. Is this it? This song. Okay. Oop. All right. I can't play that too much or I'll get... YouTube people will come after me. Um, so anyways, so Sarah Borellis, brave. So maybe someone's name is Sarah. I didn't say Sarah. Um, that could be the connection here as well. All right, but that is your guidance. Speak your truth from your heart. Be committed to always being open and honest about that in any situation, especially this one. So that is your advice. So pile one, I'm going to end this here. Again, thank you guys so much for spending your time with me. I know this is a little bit of a longer pile, but I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you guys so, so much, and I'll see you in a future reading. Bye, guys. Hello, hello, my lovely friends from pile two. You picked this super cute you pick it up <laughs> on her card and I pair that with this shell for pile two um so with this otter card um let me Ryan, rewind back a second. Um, we are going over how is your person feeling and thinking about you the connection anything else that wants to come up with that said We'll talk about this otter card a little bit. I'm going to pull some um, energy and energy check-in. I did have a friend recently tell me that she doesn't love them because if it's not exact, she feels like it's not her pile, even if she was drawn to it. So if you feel that way about the energy check-ins, um, I know a lot of people love it, but if you don't, um, it's a newer thing. You can always just fast forward ahead until you see me start pulling the tarot if you want to just jump to that. So totally fine. Just want to let you guys know. Um, so with that said, this otter energy, otter energy is very joyful, playful, contentment, it's excitement, it's a little bit mischiefy. I don't know if anyone has ever seen like otters kind of play around. Um, I heard they can be a little aggressive, so maybe that's in there, but um, it, it's really fun. I know a, lo a local, uh, the Clearwater Marine Aquarium, where Winter from Dolphin Tail was, um, He's no longer there, but um, he passed away. Anyways, moving along, uh, there there's a, otters there and they're really fun to watch. So I take my kids there. So there's just like a playfulness. So there's something about this connection or this person either sees you or they could be playful. There's just a playfulness within the connection. Really kind of fun, exciting, um, like very much in the present. Like, so it may be when you guys are together, it's again, very fun, playful. Even if you tend to be a ser more serious person or they're more serious, it's like when you guys get together, it's just like this childlike playful vibes going on. So that kind of comes up right away. We did lose a candle here. We'll light that in a second. Let's, let's do the energy check-in first. So and for the point of the energy check-in is for at least all or some of it to resonate for you to help you know if you're in the right spot but that's up to you if you want to go with that okay let's see two of those and Let's see what we have. So again, we have this playful otter kind of vibe here. We have put your computer away. Working less and having more fun will strengthen your relationship. Again, kind of like, again, all work, no play kind of vibe. Um, so it's 
I mean, one of you guys could be more playful than the other and you kind of encourage the other to kind of step away from work. Um, someone could be a workaholic in here and it's like, let, let's have fun, let's, let's play. We have engagement ring, engagement, partnership, commitment, eternity, completion, union. So some of you guys could be engaged or there's a big commitment going on in this connection or that could have been recently discussed. All right, we have a gamble. So someone could be into gambling, uh, something along those lines. They're also like with gambling, I think of someone holding their cards close to chest. So maybe someone not being fully open and honest um, about their feelings all the time, maybe being a little coy. Um, this doesn't feel overtly like sneaky. This feels like playful. Um, we have fire in the soul, inspiration. So a lot of passion, a lot of inten intensity in this connection between the two of you. Um, we have silver, warrior of light, and there's a big sword of truth. So there's a truth about the intuit intuitive nature to this connection. There feels like very like a, an intuitive knowing here with this connection. The number 30 may be important. Let's stick that here and let's see what our last card says for energy check-in. We have getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. There also could be a need for some of you guys to get to know each other a little better. It's interesting with that, that engagement, you know, again, some of us do things in different directions, but there, there could have been a recent, like really diving in and expressing some stuff um, where you feel like you know each other and it's been a little more committed. Maybe, you know, this doesn't have to be like, a commitment to like marriage this could be like committing to each other moving to the next step it could have started off one way and you're progressing from this playful exciting kind of energy into a more committed more getting to know each other even if someone's kind of holding their their cards close to chest um all right let's relight this and we'll jump into the tarot so hopefully something in there or all of it resonated for you i did this backwards let's see okay got it in there all right, pile two, pile two, that's where we're at. Let's see, we're doing using the crystal unicorn tarot to get us started. So how is pile two's person feeling? I'm thinking about them, please. If you're new, welcome, so happy to have you here. If you're returning, yay, I, I, I hope you enjoy the reading. If you're an OG, been around for years, love you guys so much. All right, let's see. We have a Four of Cups. So the Four of Cups is a really interesting energy. This is an energy of, can be rejection, it can be apathy, it can be missed opportunity. Um, it's it's someone kind of focusing on something else and missing like this cup of love. So they could feel like either you're a missed opportunity or maybe they could have afraid that you would reject them. Maybe that's why they kind of keep some of this to themselves. We have a Nine of Wands which is a perseverant kind of energy. It's been through a lot, you know, someone that's been through some battles. There's a feeling of like this person feeling like you might not need them. It's kind of coming up. They may be worried that, you know, if you guys started off as kind of playful that maybe you don't want that or are worried about that. It's kind of coming in, but we'll keep going. Now we have five of cups. This is regretful energy. This is really interesting. So I don't know what happened from here to here because these are there's a disconnect and that may make sense for you guys though. So sometimes I'm like, this doesn't make sense, but I have to remember it's not for me all the time. Okay, we have an, a King of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords. There does feel like there's there's a air energy versus earth energy. So someone may be an earth sign, someone may be an air sign here. I don't know. I'm getting like a stubbornness. This is interesting. I'm actually going to clarify these before I, I get too, too caught up in this storyline. So can I get in more insight to this four of cups? Why is this four of cups here? Five of wands, nine of wands, six of cups, high priestess, Page of Pentacles, the Fool, and then we have an Ace of Swords. Okie dokie, pile two. How is this person feeling about you? 
as playful and fun and, and going one way this is, there feels like something has shifted and changed for a lot of you. That might not be the truth for all of you. But there's this feeling of regret about not following my intuition, being um, possibly owing some sort of an apology with this Five of Cups and the Page of Pentacles here. There's there's like an I'm sorry. Um, this also, this person feels like you have a lot of people biting for your attention. So it's like they, they feel like one of many when it comes to you. So you may be very attractive. Again, this person's extremely attracted to you with that fire in the soul. They, they feel it at the core of their essence. And, and they're drawing me back into this otter energy. And this person could feel that way about you. Like you're a bit mischievous. It's hard to read you, you know? Some of you guys may have been engaged before. Maybe that's not to this person, but to somebody else. I don't know, someone wear a fake engagement ring? Like I'm, I'm seeing like someone wearing a ring out because they try to avoid people talking to them or something. I've done that before. I don't know. They're like reminding me of when I used to do that because I was trying to pretend that, yeah, I just didn't want anyone to talk to me. So, or I had an excuse not to talk to people. <laughs> Anyways, um, that was a long time ago. Um, but, uh, so maybe someone else does that. Um, or that's a scenario how you guys met or something. I don't know. Um, but it, yeah, there's this feeling of like, there's a lot of people biting for your attention. There's, uh, the, this person feels either they feel a bit like a wounded warrior or they see you as a wounded warrior that you may you may have your walls up because you've been through a lot but this person does feel connected to you from a deep level you could have known this person from childhood or it could feel like a past life connection or you have a family connection with this person with the six of cups but the six of cups for me is a soul level connection it's a feeling of home it's a feeling of soulmate soul level like the uh, there's, there's so many labels out there, guys. So I kind of just encompass it in that. So take it for how it fits. But it's it's more than just your run-of-the-mill, like, meeting someone. There's there's a knowingness um, to it. It doesn't make it any more special than other connections. My guides are always big about that. But just if you're very tapped in, tuned in, you may pick up on those things more than others, other connections. Um, all connections are valuable, though. Though with this, so we have this Five of Cups. I already mentioned this. There, there's a feeling of, I'm sorry I didn't trust my intuition. I'm sorry that the unseen made me scared to, to move forward. Or um, I, I regret not, not taking the chance on this. Or they could be feeling like they will regret if they don't take a chance on this. They could miss out on this opportunity. If you guys are together and it's kind of like playful and they're kind of seeing where it's going, there could be, again, fear of rejection, a fear of a lot of people, but they also don't want to miss out on this connection. They feel definitely very connected to you. You guys could have a similar background where you've been through, you know, certain traumas. Um, be mindful of, of that. Um, I mean, you guys could bond over past traumas. Um, and such there, there's a similarity so maybe you guys both have some core childhood wounding as each other but yeah there's there's a regret around not trusting the intuition here or they're afraid that they're going to regret not just trusting in their intuition now the king of pentacles page of pentacles king of pentacles is loyal dedicated, solid energy. So this person sees you as that they see you as abundant. We have all these grapes on here, this abundant energy, this, this solid, this rock of a human is how this person sees you. So I feel like they have a lot of respect for you and they may not feel like up to your stature with this page of pentacles kind of being here. Um, but uh, it really does feel like this person does want to offer you something, but they, they kind of feel like they you already have everything or you have a lot of people giving you stuff. So they, they don't know if they're going to measure up per se. So the Queen of Swords, this person is enthralled with how you view things, how you think about things, also how you cut things out that do not serve you. You're like quick, you're, you're very quick to be like, this isn't for me, I'm starting anew. So this person also, if they have any sort of insecurities, they could be like, ah, this person's gonna see right through me or I'm not good enough and they're just gonna cut me out and, and go about their own way. With that said though, they're also with this energy here with the Queen of Swords and the Fool, there is an energy of like understanding a truth, seeing some clarity and, and wanting some sort of new beginning or have this new phase. And we have the Ace of Swords encompassing this whole reading is, you know, a brand new, 
either thinking, an epiphany, a, a realization that this person's had about you, about the connection. Um, also wanting to begin some sort of new connection in, in either communication. Again, we had getting to know each other. I feel like this person just wants to know you on a deeper level. It's this feeling like I can't quite get enough, but there there is fears that that they're not good enough as well. What's under here? We have judgment. Some of you, this this is a reconciliation kind of thing, coming back from the dead, so to speak, with the judgment card. And there's a lot of anxiety this person feels about their emotional state with the King of Cups and how they feel towards you. And then we have Eight of Wands, which is rapid shifting change, but also communication. So I feel like this person wants to, to talk to you. They want to either reignite this or bring this to the next level, but they do have anxiety and maybe some sleepless nights. You also could be haunting them in their dreams, um, but they have a lot of emotional depth feelings towards you. Okay. So let's pull one of my other decks just to get more insight to the feelings. Pile two, that's where we're at, pile two. Okay, pile two. Loyalty. Do we already have that in this pile? Why am I thinking that? Okay. Um, dedication. Oh, I was talking about the King of Pentacles being loyal. So yeah, this point, this person feels that you are loyal, but they also have a loyalty to you. They feel like they feel like they need to guard you, protect you, be your friend, be your confidant, that kind of thing. But they also feel like they can trust you with lots of things that maybe they can't trust other people with. Now we have shallow, superficial, bored, and blank. This kind of reminds me of this four of cups kind of energy. So this person feels loyal to you, but then we're looking at how they feel towards you. Some of them could feel like maybe you're a little superficial or you might get bored with them. Again, there's a fear of rejection. Like they might not be deep enough. Maybe you are a very deep person. We have the high priestess, queen of swords here. This is, you know, depth. This is this is insight, this is intellect. So this person could feel like like they don't quite add up or they might you might think of them as a little like surface level, shallow end of the pool where you're the abyss, something like that. Some of them could again see you as a little maybe I mean take it for how it fits. Don't be offended. If it's not you, it's not you. Um but if you have a tendency to like cut people out really quickly they could feel like, oh, well, maybe they won't see the depth of me. Okay. But they still feel very loyal to you. We have frozen silence, stillness, no words. So this feels very tongue-tied. Like, I want to say stuff, but I'm afraid to say stuff, and I feel like I can't. Some of you may have blocked this person for some reason or another. I don't know. Um, but this person, feel, it's feeling a little stuck. We do have judgment on the bottom. So wake up call, um, life review, epiphanies. Again, we had this ace of swords. So if there's like a, a pause in your connection, there could be like this recent epiphany that this person's had. Maybe how loyal they feel, how much they missed out on this connection, how regretful they're feeling. Take it for how it fits for you. Let's move on to hidden truths or challenges. So for pile two, what are some hidden truths or challenges in this connection? Hidden truths or challenges. Deep spiritual awakening underway. So there could be some sort of opening, spiritual awakening that can also be indicative of the judgment card. So what you might not realize, or that could even be a challenge is someone's going through a deep emotion or a spiritual awakening, like a dark night of the soul kind of energy. Caught up in the emotions. So yeah, this person is very caught up in the emotions that they feel towards this. You know, we have this person kind of in the water, the feet are up. They could feel like they're drowning in their emotions. Maybe emotions are scary for this person, but I, I kind of feel like they, they think that about you. And if you've been through a lot in your life, it might be rightfully so. You have that nine of wands, like, okay, I'm not just letting my guard down for anyone kind of energy. But hidden truths are challenges. So this would be a hidden truth that there's a lot more emotions that they're letting in, but also a challenge being caught up in those emotions. So hidden truth or challenge, hidden truth or challenge. Two. 
enlightenment, seeing more clearly. Again, there's been some sort of real, recent realization that this person's had about you, about the connection, and about their feelings and their thoughts. Good and true for challenges. Dark night of the soul. Called that already. And I saw this as soon as I said it. I saw that card in my head. And I'm like, I wonder if it's going to come out. And there it is. If you're not familiar with that, again, this is a general reading, so take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Maybe some of you are going through some sort of dark night of the soul. I feel like anyone that's been on the journey for a long time of growth and awakening and all that stuff, there's multiple of these. So just so you know, hate to be the bearer of bad news, but um, but there is a feeling that, th that your person is caught up in that. And maybe that's what you don't realize that they're like waking up. And we've had like judgment pop up twice. We've had an ace of swords, again, a realization that like, oh, like, okay, I, I'm understanding now what is going on. So that is all here, my friends. Let's look into this person's intentions moving forward towards you. All right, pile, pile two's intentions. intentions what are their intentions how to use person's intentions I keep having all these cards want to flip around all right so we have the page of Pentacles in reverse we have a nine of sword knight of swords nine of swords sorry injustice we have a two of cups so what is this person's intentions? These two cards make me feel like they're, they don't necessarily intend to, you know, offer you anything. They're, they're caught up in anxiety. Um, but with justice being here, they could be trying to get past this, get past the anxiety, get past the, the worry about talking to you because they feel very drawn to, to connect with this two of pentacles or two of goodness, two of cups. And then we have the Ten of Cups right under that. Um, but justice would be like to be fair, to kind of even things out, to come back into balance. So this person, they could intend to fight through this. They may not come in and say, I'm sorry just yet, but they do feel like they want to be fair. They want to have some sort of connection here. By the order of the queen, a proclamation. No ye, but we are. Sorry, I'm just like looking. These are the Wonderland Tarot. So I feel like, like the proclamation, this person does want to communicate something and they could want to communicate how they do really feel or they could see you as a partner in their life. So I think they intend to get past this, this anxiety that's kind of shown up deep in this pile and, and even things out and balance things out. But with that said, I feel like they, this, they're kind of still in this process. They might get here but it might be a little bit. Like, I don't feel like this is gonna happen tomorrow or anything, if I'm being very honest with you guys. So we have that. All right, I'm gonna move into our, actually, just kidding. I'm gonna pull a couple more Oracle feeling cards and then we'll move into our songs. So I get any more insight to this person's feelings. Make sure I'm holding this right. Pile twos, feeling towards pile one. Date, fun, excitement, meetings, fear of dating someone new. So I do feel like, you know, this person does want to date you. They do want to see where this is going. There's an excitement, but there's also a fear mixed into that. It's like stuck between fear and a good time kind of energy. Communication, good conversation needing to be heard, but also difficulties expressing. So I feel like this person does want to communicate with you. If they're not communicating, like that's come up here a lot. Again, Ace of Swords is that energy of like restarting or a new beginning in communication or just a new way of thinking. Um, all right, one more and then we'll do songs. Two more, just kidding. Okay, we have Farewell Journey and Vacation. So there talks about needing a time to reflect, desire for worldly pleasure, sadness, loss, and abandonment. So this person could feel afraid or sad that this is over, but they're needing a time to distract themselves and go on vacation from this. So I don't know what has happened between you guys. Again, one side, it's like hot and cold, like really great. And then ah, all this stuff happened. So, but you guys would know. Um, 
but what they're feeling like they're they do want I do feel like this person does want to date you they want some sort of new kind of revamp but there is like a part of them that's accepting that this may be over so that is all tied into this all right now let's move on to our song cards and we'll pull message cards as well so with the song cards if you know the song's cool if you don't and you feel so guided you can look up the lyrics there'll be a message for you in the lyrics so pile two song cards the scientist cold play i always think of that line come out to meet you and tell you i'm sorry you don't know how love you lovely you are i love that song <laughs> we have another life motionless and white don't know that song. Fall Into Me by Forrest Black. I also don't know that song. Most of these are, are viewer um, suggested. Stitches by Shawn Mendes. And our last one, we have Chasing Cars by Snow Patrol. So those are your songs. If you want to take a screenshot, if you want to just pick one to look up, um, feel free to do that or not totally fine. All right, let's get some message cards. So pile two, what does the person want to say if they could? What do they want them to know, please? What does this person want to say? What do they want them to know? You'll forever be in my heart. I've cried swimming pools of tears for you. I hope that, you know, that Nine of Swords energy has come up a couple times. I know it was my fault and I'm sorry. There are so many more things I want to do with you. I could never resist you. Pile two, what do they want to say? What do they want to know if they could? I will love you until I am old and gray. All right. I regret how I treated you. I think of you as soon as I open my eyes. And you are absolutely beautiful in every way. So let me put this here. Let's pull a couple more from this deck. What do they want to say? What do they want them to know? My soul longs for every part of you. I have cried over losing you. That's come up a couple times, which I feel like some of you may be surprised, but there's a lot of regret. I'm sorry, I've cried. There's so much I have to say and I don't know how, and I want you to be happy and loved even if it's not with me. That's unconditional love right there. So, and then I will always love you. So some pretty intense messages there piled to. Um, I am going to end the reading here. I'm going to move on to our confirmations and then we'll pull advice. So if you need a little bit of extra confirmation about if this is your person, feel free to stick around. If not, thank you guys so much. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed this reading or comment. Let me know where you're watching from. That does really help my algorithm and I appreciate that so much. All right. So pile two's confirmations for those who need it. Okay, we have third house energy, which is Gemini, fourth house energy, Cancer, third house energy again, um, Gemini, first or seventh house energy, Libra, we have Pisces here, which is 12th house, and second house, Taurus. Corresponding months to the numbers, we have March, April, uh, July, December, and February. Um, someone could work in communication, someone could be in real estate or work around the home or fixing homes. Um, someone could work in law enforcement or even the judicial system, um, a therapist, uh, someone, again, their dreams could be uh, incorporated, dreams could be important. Um, someone you could have worked with or like in your day-to-day, -day, like running into them at work or something like that, or day-to-day -day routines. Um, someone could be a really big foodie or like luxurious things. Um, yeah, someone could work in communication, broadcasting, journalism, something where they communicate, a writer speaking their voice. Um, all right, let's get some other attributes. Dark eyes, 
unique smile and optimistic. All right, child two's confirmations for those who need it. Ooh, okay. We have the number eight, so the eighth house showing up, which is Scorpio energy. Eighth month would be August. We have very driven Canada connection or Canadian connection. Southeast Asia watches your social media. We have the death card, so Scorpio energy showing up again. We have fire signs, so Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, and we have Pisces showing up again. And let's pull some letters. So you can be, we might get your person's name. I'm gonna channel some names, um, initials, locations. Let's see what pops up. So for those who need clarification, can we please provide that for them? All right, T H I D Y D I Y. Someone might be into DIY projects. I'm hearing Theo, Theodore. Um, so R E. They. So someone might use different pronouns because we have they here, they them. Um, dire. I'm hearing Thad. Red. Red might be important, the color red, read. Henry. Derby might be important, like roller derby or something, maybe even horses. Um, hearing Thad. Timothy. Victor, Derek, Derry, Daryl, Heather, Vince, Riley, Rayleigh, Ray, Raymond, Rhett, Thomas, Ty. Someone might have a thing about being bound or tied or like to wear ties. Um, Harriet, Henrietta, um, Dara, Debbie. Rachel, we keep giving me a lot of C's even though we don't have C's, but when I channel names, it just comes in however it comes. Um, Tyler, Ty, Tracy, Dharma, Dara, Darren, Karen, Teresa, Terry, Veronica, Erica, Esther, Eric, That's pretty much all I'm getting. So if you see your person's initials or their name, please take that or yours. Any confirmations for those who needed it. So, all right, let's pull some guidance for you at this time to end this reading. Pile two's guidance. What is our guidance at this time? Guidance. Beauty. Here, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but also just like really reflecting on the beauty of the connection, the beauty of yourself, really seeing yourself at the core and, and honoring when people give you compliments. Maybe if this person compliments you, but you maybe you don't see it, um, 
there there's there's a there's a reminder here also there there's so much more than than just beauty like like the soul is skin is deeper than the skin goes and there may be a need to either look at your soul a little bit deeper or look at this person person's soul a little bit deeper and things aren't always what they seem guys like so we do have like the reflection is a little different than this picture is so it does feel like there's a reminder that there's more than, than meets the eye to this connection. There's more going on than you can see or than you may have realized. Sorry for that glare. And then home. There really feels like, okay, so the advice here is around focusing on self. Like I am looking, she is looking at herself in this mirror and home, like really getting to the heart of any issues or any triggers this person may have brought up into you and really working on it's like cleaning house first but like the proverbial house like your your inner self so maybe some of you guys are challengers avoiding some sort of awakening that you're going through avoiding the the hard work avoiding the looking deeper into yourself and into why you do things your own traumas and i get that that's hard i, I get it i know and i'm not saying as if it's like easy to do but it is worth it to really you know investigate and dig deep into yourself and really like figure out and ask yourself objective questions why do I do this why am I attracted to this you know what what do I really want to bring into my home life and do my actions align with what I'm trying to bring into my life those kinds of things so um, we also have boundaries on the bottom. So making sure that you have healthy boundaries in place, um, that you're standing in true um, and a reminder, a friendly reminder, a boundary is supposed to be a picket fence. So it shows somebody where your line is, not a brick wall where no one can get in, right? Those aren't healthy boundaries. These are like a flow of energy, but a boundary, but, but not, you know, letting people walk all over you or this person walk all over you or letting situations walk all over you, still having healthy boundaries and standing up for yourself in a healthy way. So, all right, guys, that is your reading. Thank you guys so much. I just looked at my clock, it is 333. That might be a number for somebody. Um, but thank you guys again so much for being here. Don't forget to like, comment, share if you feel so guided to. I always appreciate your guys' energy. If you're not part of um, my family or subscriptions, I would love it to have you subscribe. So don't forget to do that. I do lots of love readings on all kinds of different facets of that on this channel. My other channel, I'm still working on growing that. Um, just finding the time right now, my kids are about to go back to school. So I will be able to dedicate a little more time. Um, I am going to be, I have another channel called Little Light Tarot, where I'm going to be doing more type of healing, um, self-reflective life, possibly career, like non-love readings over there. My week aheads I do over there. I just haven't been able to be consistent as of right now, but I am working towards that. Um, but anyway, so thank you guys so much and I'll see you in a future reading. Bye guys. Hello, 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 pile three. So we are going over how are they thinking and feeling about you? Um, how's your person currently feeling about you? Um, and the connection and anything else that wants to come up. You guys know that I will share. If you're new, I hope you enjoy this reading. I'd love to have you subscribe or be part of the channel. And returning people, don't forget to like and comment where you're watching from. That does really help me and my algorithm on YouTube and, and uh, do its thing. So thank you guys for that. So we're going to start with a quick energy check-in. I did have a lovely friend mention that sometimes the energy check-in throws them off. So if, if you feel that way, you can always just uh, fast forward a little bit till I start the tarot. If you know this is your pile for those that need like confirmation at the beginning, I'm still going to do the energy check-ins for those who need it. But if ever you're like, ah, oh, it throws me off a bit um, and I feel drawn to piles, then just, just skip it. Totally fine. So with this card, so again, we have the elephant and we have this tiger's eye um, carved elephant for pile three. So this card in the, the book, it talks a lot about um, an unstoppable force, kind of auspicious, but wise. And then it refers to Ganesh, um, which is the god, um, uh, the remover of obstacles um, in Hindu tradition. So um, our religion. And um, so it's kind of like there could be some sort of obstacle sometimes 
in the description of this card also sometimes it talks about challenges being there for us to grow and expand from them. So something about that might relate. There could be a challenge in this connection or you could feel like something about this connection has challenged you to grow and to change and to be the best version of yourself. Um, or you could do that for this person. You could push this person, probe this person to really like expand um, who they are and to become more wise and more aware and unstoppable force. So we have that kind of coming in. I'll pull some other cards. Energy check in pile three. Energy check in pile three. I don't drop my cards everywhere. <laughs> Energy check in pile three. I try to do this so fast that, oh no, then my cards fall down. So my apologies. Uh, Energy check in pile three. Energy check in pile three. And energy check-in pile three. So my goal with energy check-ins is to have all or at least something in this collection of cards to help you know that you're in the right spot. If me describing the elephant didn't quite get you there. But then we have obstacles. Unhealed wounds are blocking forward movement, which is super interesting with this, um, the exact um, definition of this card literally says obstacles. Um, you know, uh, the remover of obstacles, the destroyer of, of obstacles is, is, is talked about. So that is, I love that. I love when things just align so well. Um, we have acts, break up, separation, stop the pattern, silent treatment or abandonment. So something about that, there could be, you know, a stopping of a pattern. There could be a separation in this connection. There could be silent treatment or possibly even abandonment or a breakup, but something, you know, halting hopefully that's that it's the stopping of a pattern of obstacles of wounds that are holding you back or holding them back we do have realization so there could have been a recent epiphany with this person has towards you or about the connection or vice versa we also have water emotional well-being so with this card coming up um i want to give a nod to water signs uh why am i blinking <laughs> Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio energy, but emotional well-being. So there's something about this connection that invokes that or forces you to look at your emotional well-being or vice versa. Again, I do want to give a nod to earth signs. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This, this card is associated with the fire signs. So uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, we have Faith, Warm, Worm Moon, the number 31. This is the number seven. Um, so July 31st might be important. There's a 31st in July, right? Yep. Okay. I have to do that little saying in my head. Um, we, this looks like mother earth and, you know, kind of looking pregnant. So that could be, um, there could be children in this connection. Um, also I think of mother earth, I think of empress energy. So a nod to Taurus and Libra because, uh, empress is associated with Venus which rules Taurus and Libra, but faith, the faith. So there might be a sense of like faded connection or have to have faith and trust in this connection that it's all going to work out. And then we have a past life relationship. You have known each other before. So either this is the first go around this lifetime, or, you know, it could just be um, a resurrection of a relationship that you've already had. So if any of that relates to you, let's jump into the tarot for your reading to see how they feel. So pile three's person, how are they feeling about the viewer, please? Pile three, we're using the uh, crystal unicorn tarot for the bulk of the reading. So we have a king of pentacles. Uh, this is the sugar daddy, <laughs> so to speak, of the tarot. But if we're looking at how they feel about you, this person sees you as abundant, as wealthy, as loyal, and depend, uh, dependable. We have the fool. So some sort of new beginning or relaunch going on here. The four of cups. So this is the energy of rejection or possible missed opportunity. Someone focusing on the past, not really realizing the offer that's coming in. So there could be that the, the way this is kind of reading is this person does see you as 
very worthy. Um, you also seem to be a go-getter with that full energy, but there, there's a sense of you not fully seeing them or if they've made some sort of offer to you, they feel like you haven't taken them up on their offer. We have a seven of swords, you know, that's, that's sneaky energy or strategic energy. It's also energy of just hidden information. I'm going to wait till we clarify that to get a little more info. So there could be something hidden in this connection or someone not telling full truths here. And we have a three of wands. Um, this person could also see you as sneaky or strategic, um, but maybe not fully opening up and telling telling them how you feel. Because again, we're looking at you. We're not looking at them in this in this reading and how they feel towards you. So uh, they, they could feel like they can't quite read you or you're holding something back. All right. Um, three of Wands is an energy of waiting for something to manifest, waiting for something to come in, something that you're longing for. You're, you kind of made your plans with the, the Two of Wands or, you know, and then you're trying to move forward, but still trying to, a little bit of a waiting energy. So it's kind of like wait and see. So this person could be kind of waiting and seeing how things work out, how things play out between the two of you guys. All right, King of Pentacles here. We have the death card, so Scorpio energy showing up. Death is death and rebirth. Um, so this person could see you as someone that, that has a lot of depth to them. Um, it is associated with uh, Scorpio energy. So not only are you solid, stable, but there's a deepness to you. You may have reinvented yourself. Um, you've pulled yourself up from possibly meager beginnings to really get to where you are. It's all like something that you've done, you've recreated, you've transformed. And there's, there's coming in with like a sense of being like admiring that about you. Maybe you have dealt with a lot of obstacles in your life with this elephant energy and coming in wise and strong because you've been through so much. And this person sees that about you again, like that death card, that, that Scorpio energy is death. Like so much, I, I love Scorpio energy. I know they get a bad rap, but I also have a Scorpio stellium and a house stellium. So I, uh, but I'm a lot of Libra too. So anyways, <laughs> um, I, I, I like a good backstory. So all my Scorpio placements out there will understand that. Um, so there's just like a deep abyss of who, uh, like of who you are. You know, you're not shallow or surface level, though I don't necessarily think again, we'll see what, what is hidden. Um, I don't know if they, they can tell there's substance to you, but there, there might be a part of them that can't quite reach it. So Knight of Wands. So this person definitely feels very attracted to you. They feel very drawn to you. Again, it's like, it's like a new beginning constantly. There's a freshness to you, um, with that full energy combined with the Knight of Wands. Like it's, you're always like, it's like vivaciousness. Um, coming in but playful but always kind of a little bit surprising all right it's four of cups ten of cups so i can read this two ways or multiple ways i mean with, with tarot right if you know tarot like there's so many um interpretations depending on what cards they're around and the meanings of the cards but the, the big things for me it's either this person feels like they have a lot to offer you they want to offer you this ten of cups this deep emotional fulfillment and you're maybe not looking at them properly or not seeing it or maybe there, there comes in a sense of like not believing it so again maybe this isn't your first go around maybe they've messed up in the past and it, there's a sense of you're like, eh, I'm not falling for that again, <laughs> kind of energy. But this person is kind of coming in with this big offer, but they don't feel like that you're seeing it. The other side of that, this person could feel like this has been a missed opportunity. Like you guys could have been so much more if you aren't already. Um, also, we can look at someone just kind of being afraid that you're going to reject them um, because they feel so emotionally drawn to you. All right, dun dun dun. What's the Seven of Swords about? The insights of Seven of Swords Tower. Okay, that's interesting. Let's clarify one more time. Justice, Libra energy showing up. Seven of Swords clarified by the Tower and Justice. Person feels about you. 
they could be hiding the fact that you've really shaken up their whole world when all they want is balance. These are two very pole opposite energies. This is destruction, ah, falling apart, right? And this is like balanced, even, solid energy, just energy. So there's a hiddenness here. If you're like in a marriage with this person, this person could be fearful that things are going to fall apart and they could lose you um, because of they, they feel like you're hiding something. They feel like you're hiding. Um, like something falling apart and you've been through the ringer here. Um, I think so. Like there, there is also like a secret divorce for somebody take that if it fits it's not going to be for everybody but I do feel like there is some sort of divorce or falling apart of a stable connection that's being hidden or not talked about or kind of uh, concealed all right we'll see what comes up with with the rest of our cards for that three of wands with three of wands here high priestess more unknowing kind of stuff, right? And then bottom of the deck, we have strength with Leo energy. So this person sees you as strong, they see you as courageous, they see you as like a fierce serenity. Um, but the three of wands, so this person feels like intuitively they're waiting for something, they're waiting for you to wake up, they're waiting for things to, to play out, but yet there's like a, they're waiting to figure it out. So the high priestess here is our intuition, it's our connection. Um, but it's also a sense of, of just knowing versus seeing, but also she can show up when you're not supposed to know. So yeah, there's like a mystery to this, but this person, yeah, maybe some of you <laughs> are hiding some sort of not information that would break things apart. Hmm. That's very interesting. I'm actually going to use another deck. I, I'm not letting this go, right? <laughs> Just yet. So, oh man, I wasn't going to take reversals in this deck as I can tell from the, okay, let's, let's, let's clarify this a little more. Not letting this go. So spirit, help me understand this seven of swords tower justice information. What else can you dive into this? The high priestess pops up over this. I'm like, okay, we're not supposed to know. I'll let it go. <laughs> Let's see. Let get some more information about the seven of swords. We have death. So some sort of transformation. The tower and death can be also about some sort of spiritual awakening. Um, they could be hiding that from you as well. So they could be thinking about like this transforma transformative energy going on with them. Um, so like kind of like a dark night of the soul kind of energy. So they could be concealing that. They also could be concealing how much this has changed them, how how really forceful you've you've come into their life. Maybe you came in like an elephant that, that kind of highlighted their their blocks and their wounds and you know knowing where they need to change their patterns and that might be the realization that they're having but you know they need to have faith and trust that it's all going to work out um, kind of energy. Okay, yeah, there's that Scorpio. There, there's some depth to this. There's, there's also seeing a depth to you. All right, I'm going to pull some Oracle cards to see if we can get some more insight to how this person's feeling, please. Insight to how this person's feeling. Pile three. Oop, I have these upside down. You're still the one. We have a cassette. It says cassette tape. Truth and value in what you say. And then the the there's positive and negative each to each of these cards and negative influences from your past. So this person could feel like you're still the one. There could be like some sort of cassette tape connection for some of you. Um, truth and value in what they what you say. So this person does again. They 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 trust you. They um they like feel. There, there's a lot of value in you, even if they can't figure out fully all of it. But um, yeah, they, they, they have a lot of value and trust in what you say. 
they can also see you as very intuitive, very, some of you guys may be clairvoyant, some of you guys may be tarot readers, you know, something like that, where you have your own gifts and, um, and you could like see right through them as well, like the things that they try to hide. But they trust your counsels the way that's kind of coming in. Sunglasses, cool, laid back, relaxed attitude, pessimistic view of the bad before seeing the good. Whenever I get glasses, I feel like people are spying on other people though. <laughs> like a watching kind of thing. But this person, yeah, there, there's like, they know there's depth there. Maybe some of you guys hide that. Maybe again, there's like an obstacle or a wall that you've put up and this person's trying to get in deeper. They're trying to dig and they, they know there's more there, but they're not quite sure. But you come across to them as cool, laid back and having a relaxed attitude. Again, it's like kind of like nonchalant. So it's where this person doesn't know quite how you feel towards them. Belly dancer, strength, body confidence, sensuality. The negative side is insecurities, negative attitudes. So the, the pessimistic and negative attitude has popped up twice. So if it fits for you, take it. If you don't want to, you don't have to. This is a general reading. So take what resonates, leave what doesn't. But this person would see you as very sensual, very confident in yourself. Again, we have strength. There, there's, there's a powerfulness. There's a passion and power that you have that this person is very drawn to that kind of came in with this full and knight of wands energy as well. There's, there's a draw. There's a, a sexiness, a sensuality to you. Some of you guys may be some type, type of dancer as well. Um, and this person is very, very drawn into that. Like the way I'm hearing, like the, like the way your hips move or something like your your rhythm. That's what I'm trying to get to. Um, we have engagement on the bottom. So that might be, it says relationships and sexual needs and craving deep connections. So this person could be really craving a deep connection from you. I, I feel like a, some of you or somebody out there definitely keeps everyone at arm's length. You know, like I'm not letting you in and, and this coming from a protective place. And maybe that's a wound that that you need to work on because it says unhealed wounds are blocking forward momentum. Maybe some of that is insecurities being highlighted and, you know, putting up a wall and acting like you're cool and calm, but behind below the surface, there's more to that. All right, let's see more insight to how this person's feeling. Pile for you, please. Tension, turbulence, argument, stress. So there could have been a recent argument with some of you. There could be turbulence. Um, there feels like there's witty banter that kind of gets taken out of hand. Like it goes from funny to not funny or something. Um, deja vu, past life. Let's come up twice. And then karmic lessons, repeated patterns. Stopping the pattern. So this could, you know, again, not the first time you guys have been around this either at in this life or from a life before. With karmic lessons being here, there is something that your souls, like if we're gonna get deep and spiritual about this connection, which has come up a couple times, there is like karma or lessons that you guys decided before coming here that you wanted to play out and heal through, heal like those deep intrinsic spiritual wounding. Um, so, you know, if you can be objective and step back and look at the pattern that keeps coming up because it has repeated pattern, stop the pattern. So you can look at your connection with this person. What is the pattern? What is happening? What is repeated? And if it's not, if this is a newer connection for you guys, but if there is a repeated pattern in people that you date, I know the phrase like, I always end up dating the same person, you know, or the same things happen to me over and over. If you can be objective and look at, okay, well, what are my actions? Not saying that you cause, especially if people do shitty things to you. I'm not saying not blaming, sorry for cussing. Um, I'm not saying that that's your fault. So please don't take it that way. But you know, how we react to things is our responsibility. And that might be where the lesson is. Am I standing up for myself? Am I not? Am I not being vulnerable with people? Am I pushing them away? You know, am I, does it, do I have my heart closed to things? and I'm expecting someone to beat down the wall and I'm testing them and all those things. Those are all, you know, negative toxic defenses that may have kept you safe, but you may be being urged by the universe to like 
really finally work through that and heal that where you don't feel like you have to have a wall up. You have boundaries and you have, you know, autonomy for yourself, but you can also let someone in and not crumble if they, if it doesn't work out. I hope that makes sense. All right. Keeping going with their feelings. This one and this one. So we have clarity, honesty, intention, and truth. So this person either wants that from you or wants to give that to you. And then we have euphoria, chasing thrills, joy, and laughter. And then we have elusive. I, someone out there is very elusive to this person. They feel like they can't quite, they can't quite get in. You don't let them in. And uh, again, if, if that's your pattern that kept you safe for a long time, it might be time to maybe pick a different way, you know, when you're ready, when you're ready. I know sometimes I, I ask a lot of you guys in these readings. Um, it's that Scorpio. I, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm all about the, the hard conversations and the hard truths. I'm like, what? Please tell me. And some people don't want to hear that. And that's fine. You do you, boo-boo. So, all right. Next, we're going to look into this person's... Oh, oops. Nope. I'm going to do hidden truths or challenges. Got ahead of myself. All right, hidden truths or challenges in this connection. Hidden truths or challenges that, I mean, we already have obstacles twice. And the one card that flipped over, we're gonna take the one card that flipped over because it's kind of funny. All right, we'll put all these. There's a card, okay, yeah, back into the pile. It says, it, past, is, past is in the past, don't look back. So if this is a past connection that you're bringing back in, the message here is not necessarily that you have to give up on this person because they're from the past. It's letting things go to, in order to move forward. If you're trying to restart a connection with someone that you have a lot of history, that history is important if you see a repeated pattern in them, but constantly looking for something and, and waiting for the other shoe to drop is just going to put you in this energy that, that's not going to bring in what you want. So there may be a need to, to let things go and trust and move forward with that. And also this comes from if, if you've been, again, in a repeated cycle with, with crappy people, you know, you don't have to focus on that but just look at either what you're attracted to, what you're attracted to in them, and is there anything in you that you can adjust or shift in order to, you know, either not, you know, not put up with that, not like be attracted to whatever it is that you're attracted to that's just highlighting your own wounding. Oh my goodness, I've really gone off on a tangent on this. Okay, hidden truths and challenges. Hopefully whoever those messages are for, I hope you find them and they find you well. Everyone else, thank you for listening. And if it's not for you, let it go. Choosing the right path for us. So that's something that could be hidden from you, but also a challenge where this person is trying to figure out the right path, but that, that that's something they're working on. They're working on trying to choose the right path for us. Like, which way do we go forward? We do in both of these, we have, I mean, this person's hanging on <laughs> to it looks like railroad tracks that are going off the side of a cliff. That's a little scary, but we both have two like linear perspective pictures. So it's like looking long distance or looking into the future, looking like long term, but trying to figure out, don't want to go back. I don't want this repeated pattern and I want the right path, but we got to figure something out. And then planning for the future. Okay, yeah, so that's definitely hidden. Like you guys don't realize how much this person is planning that like they don't wanna look back. The past is in the past. They are planning for the future and they're trying to choose the right path forward. So there is forward momentum. Next, I'm gonna look into this person's intentions. So let's see how that plays out. So pile three's person's intentions, please. Can we get insight to this person's intentions? this connection for the viewer. What is this person's intentions? We have the sun. That's the happiest card in all of tarot. We have the magician popping out. So this is Leo energy. Um, the magician, empowering, making things happen, manifesting. And then we have the eight of wands. That's communication and rapid change. Okay, well, that's probably... And we have justice on the bottom of the deck. Libra energy showing up. This is probably one of the most positive um, intentions I've had 
from the reading today. Um, so yeah, this would be, you know, the sun is, is also can be about highlighting things, highlighting what they're trying to empower. Their intentions are to highlight their, what they're trying to manifest, what they're trying to bring in. And this person wants things to change rapidly, or they want to communicate all this with you and really be fair and just if that, you know, that kind of came up with that, that seven of swords, if there was sneaky energy, if it was all them, you know, I, I would, did kind of put that view on you, but if say it's them, say it's them that was sneaky, they weren't just, they, they made things fall apart. They could be intending to kind of clear the air, change things, make things happen and be more just in me um, and be honest. And this queen, she does have the sort of truth and justice is associated with Libra. So it's like coming in with some honesty and some truth and really balancing things out with justice. So that's where their, their intentions lie. All right, let's pull some song cards. So with the song cards, there'll be a message for you in the lyrics. So if you know the song cool, and if you don't, and you feel so compelled, you know, choose one or all the songs or whatever, um, there'll be a message for you in the lyrics. Either listen to it or look up the lyrics. The song cards, pile three. I never came, Queens of the Stone Age. Every little thing she does is magic. And you know, we had the high priestess here, so this person could see you as, bit, as of magic. To the moon, Fora. One or two more. Got three sun cards. Different kind of pain, cold. I love when that one comes out. I love that song. And then Hold My Hand by Lady Gaga. We have Crucify by Tori Amos on the bottom. I was on a Tori kick lately. <laughs> so I like that that popped up. Anyway, so those are your song cards you want to take a screenshot, look those up afterwards, and then we're going to move into messages from your person, and then we'll do confirmations and advice. So, all right. So pile three, what does a person want to say if they could? What would they say if they could? What do they want to say? What did they say if they could? I wish I could take my words back. So there's something that was said that they wish they could unsay. I still feel the pain. That makes me think of a different kind of pain. I love this song. You guys should listen to this song. Okay, I'm super biased because I'm friends with, with the lead singer of the band, but are kind of friends, not like super good friends, but I'm just friends with Scooter. Anyways, keep going. Um, I remember every detail of that day. Wow, okay, I wish I could take my words back. I still feel the pain. I remember every detail of the day. So if there's some significant event, like it, it's something this person like moles over, over and over. I feel the sexual tension. We did have tension here. So that could be for some of you, sexual tension. This raw, organic kind of mm, energy that you guys carry. I wanna be more than just friends. I want to make amends. I wonder if you're happy without me. I wish we could go back. Wow. This is someone really, even though we've been leaving the past in the past, they're, they're contempl contemplating something that happened over and over again. Okay, what does this person want to say? What do they want out there to know? I saved your text and messages. My life is not as together as it seems. I want you back. Gosh, I wish I could go back. I want you back. I don't know if I've ever had my cards be so together because they're just like, you know, just like any general reading, not everything's going to resonate. So sometimes they're a little all over the board. This one feels very in tune. Watch me have like some random card come next, but we'll see. Okay, what does this person want to say? What do they want them to know? I don't want to know. Hmm, it's interesting. Okay, let's do one more. I don't know what, I don't know what to know. I hide my feelings. All right, so this person hides their feelings. Maybe that's their obstacle. They feel blocked. They have a hard time expressing themselves. Their emotional well-being is off. 
and then I can't get enough of you in the bottom of the deck. I'm gonna pull a couple more before I get into confirmations. I don't feel like we're done just yet with these. Oh, my back is killing me. Okay, let's see. What would your person say if they could? What would Kyle Gray's person say if they could? I just wanna go back in time. Oh my goodness. You changed my whole direction. I want to talk to you. Be patient with me, please. I'm making plans. A few more. You give me so much to look forward to. If I had only known what I knew, know now, and then I'm sorry I triggered you. So those are your messages, guys. It's a pretty, I can, someone is very much wishing they could take things back, wanting to go back, wanting to talk, wanting to, it's very interesting. All right, with that said, I'm gonna move over to confirmations if you guys need that. If you don't, thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you're not a part of the channel. Um, comment where you're watching from because again, that helps me out in YouTube land and I appreciate it. Or if you just wanna throw an emoji. Um, if you're looking for a personal reading, you can find my snip feed link in the description. I do live one-on-ones. Um, twice a week, or I can do recorded readings based off of questions. So you can find all the information there. And uh, yeah, all right, let's move on to confirmations. So we'll pull some like, Zodiac stuff, some, we'll channel some names and get some attributes. So, all right, let's see. Pile three for those that need extra confirmation. We have Virgo energy, sixth house energy. Okay, fifth house, which is Leo. Second house Taurus, 10th house Capricorn. We have a zero, so the full fresh start and third house Gemini. The correlating mo uh, months to the numbers, we have October, uh, June, May, February, and March may be important for some of you. Could be some birth dates in there. Okay, so let's get some attributes. So confirmations. Pile three. Okay, so we have light hair, light eyes. So light eyes and hair. Someone in the connection that has that. An animal lover. All right, let's get a couple more attributes. Pile three's confirmations. High priestess coming up again. Someone is very clairvoyant, um, very in tuned. Now, this is just part of the traditional um, tarot, but this does have a B and a J, so that might be important letters for you guys. Um, we have scar, so someone has a specific scar. We have anxious, so someone could have an anxious issue, and we have Virgo. <laughs> Virgo and anxious go very well together. Love my Virgos. Um, all right, we have X, so this is definitely an X. We have a sixth house, some more Virgo showing up. So Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. And we have an R. All right, let's pull some more letters. So letters, and I'll channel some names. Let's see what we get for letters. Pile three, confirmation letters. And, okay. So we have an R, I, N, Ren, W, S, T N L U bring Luna T. So we have double letters here and a G. We have, we have, we have a slut here. Okay. Um, we have nut as well. Someone might have a, a, a peanut allergy or like a allergy to, to nuts. Um, I'm hearing Linda, Lindsay, um, Ren, uh, like tut for like king tut so there could be uh, an egyptian connection egypt connection hearing luca lucas luke k 
Garrett, Trip, Tristan, William, Will, Bill, Billy, any of those. Lutz, Lutz, um, maybe someone called me nuts. <laughs> um, I feel like there's a joke in there for somebody. I don't know. Take it. Uh, gun. So someone could be a hunter or someone could be named Gunner. Could be a gun connection. Someone could maybe be in the military or work in the police. Um, Tully, Tilly. Killian. Jillian. Sully, Sol, Solon, Nick, Nigel, Tegan, Lindsay, Rylan. And Kyler. Oh, no, that's not in here at all, but Kyler is being popped up. Oh, I just realized we have another letter. We do have an A. Okay, it's like I feel like I have so many A things popping in. Anthony. Um, Ants, Anthony, Tony, Antonia. Hearing Gertrude all of a sudden. Um, Wilhelmina. Wonderment. I don't know why that's popping up. Um, Ashton, Ashley, want, none, there could be a religious connection or someone could be a Catholic descent or some, and one of the religions that have nuns. I know they're more than just Catholic. Um, lit, Litany, literature, someone could be like a literature, literary, um, do something along that. Maybe someone studied that in school or could be a writer, an author, um, something like that. They keep giving me like Tolan, Tully, Tilly. Nantucket is popping up. Kaysen, Lacey, Gary, Wayne. All right, I think that's pretty much all I'm getting. If you see your person's name and I didn't say it, obviously take it. If you see their initials, your initials, anything like that, that resonates for you. Um, there you guys go. I'm going to pull some guidance for you. I actually feel the, the need to read the whole elephant thing. So if you resonate with something about obstacles, maybe someone needed to hear this. So it says the elephant is arguably the most auspicious figure in the deck. Like Kanesh, the elephant represents immense wisdom as well as good fortune. It is said that the great elephant is the destroyer of obstacles. So if this card appears when you feel stuck, rest assured the path will soon become clear. To add to the mystery, the elephant also is also known to create obstacles in order to steer us in the right direction. Trust this gentle, noble creature. It illuminates the way with the light of self-knowledge. When in balance, it's one-pointed focus, generous and loving. When out of balance, you can feel you're misunderstanding fate and then trust to bring into balance you have to trust and we did have faith at the beginning of this so there might be a need to have faith that everything will work out even if you can't see it we had the high priestess pop up i am going to pull another card or two for guidance all right guidance for pile three guidance for pile three family, focus in family or what you're trying to create a community of. 
if you need advice, maybe lean into family members or someone that you consider family. Basically, it feels like, like lean into support when needed. Finding. There, there also feels like, you know, having some fun with this. And, and I know obstacles are hard or not knowing is hard, but trying to find the excitement in the journey instead of worrying about the destination. I like finding it in the moments, finding joy, excitement, energy, you know, tr transforming nervousness into excitement. You know, our body creates the exact same <laughs> chemicals for excitement and nervousness or anxiousness, but it's, uh, it's our brain that attaches what we're feeling what message to, to 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 attach it to sorry anyways but yeah there there's a there's a message here about finding like the excitement and the transformation it doesn't you don't have to it doesn't have to be so hard so if you're resisting anything that's usually making things harder just like if we hold on to things and, and something's being pulled out of our hands but if we're holding on to the rope i'm sure everybody's seen that meme when you hold on to something it, and it's just ripping through your hand, there may be a need to, to let go a little bit, let go and trust, have faith that things will work out and you don't have to know how things are gonna go and you don't have to control it. And then just finding the excitement and the joy in the moment. One more, friendship. So friendship, family, um, leaning into that, finding like-minded people, like-minded souls to kind of get you through this, especially if you're in some sort of depth of, of spiritual awakening, awakening or unveiling. I mean, anyone who knows has been there for a while, it's like peeling an onion, or we can say rose petals, <laughs> but it's layers and layers and layers and layers. But leaning in and finding, you know, family and friendship also can help and makes you feel, you know, less alone. So we also have travel. So there may be a need to get out of your immediate surroundings and open up and broaden your, your sense of what the world is really about. Especially if you feel stuck, it may be taking moving away from a current situation so you can see it more clearly. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for, for spending your time with me. I know that's got to be a little bit of a longer um, pile, but thank you so much if you're still around. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Again, don't forget to like, comment, share this with someone that you think would enjoy it. I always appreciate that. And thank you guys so, so much and have a good one. 